Welcome to episode 92 of the BCF ORG podcast, The Business of Business. I'm Brian Fisher. In the previous episode, 91, our guest was Allie Cudby discussing architecting growth. This podcast series focuses on the various subjects and topics to help you run a successful, profitable business. They're approximately 15 minutes long, so you can listen while commuting. Hopefully, you'll find one or two takeaways to implement per episode. Today's episode discusses converting visitors to customers with David Gass. Based out of Los Angeles, California, David Gass is the founder and CEO for the Bureau of Small Projects, a company that leverages their expertise and relationships to help small businesses who are making a difference converting visitors into customers. Some of the smartest people in the world work with the Bureau of Small Projects. Literally, rocket scientists and brain surgeons, Bill Nye, the science guy, Stanford University, BlackRock Neurotech, the country of Switzerland, Amory A.D., who is bringing a revolutionary Alzheimer's treatment to the market, and many, many more. The Bureau of Small Projects leverages their branding, web development, and marketing expertise with Fortune 500 companies and major brands using all the trade secrets that they've developed over the years to help small businesses, startups, and nonprofits make a big impact. David recently directed the critically acclaimed documentary, Kindness is Contagious, a film all about being nice and the benefits of being nice, narrated by Catherine Ryan Hyde, best-selling author of the book and movie, Pay It Forward. He's received numerous awards in advertising, photography, film, and has over 20 years of experience with major brands such as Levi's, Sony, IBM, Kellogg's, Disney, as well as world-class museums and cultural centers. He writes about branding for Forbes, Newsweek, and Fast Company. His work has been featured in Communication Arts, Fast Company, Graphics, The Huffington Post, The San Francisco Examiner Sunday Magazine, The Chicago Tribune Sunday Magazine, Notcot, and numerous blogs. David has spoken at events all across the country. Let's welcome... David Gaz. David, welcome to the BCF ORG podcast, The Business of Business. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for having me. I love your podcast and I love the topic of today's as well. Well, thanks for joining us today. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, David, I'm always interested in people's stories. What's your background in becoming the founder and CEO with the Bureau of Small Projects? Very, very good question. Um, it all came about from this film that we did a few years ago. I used to be a partner in a firm that worked exclusively with Fortune 500 companies and big brands. And then politically, we're, we're in a time somewhat like today where people were just not being very nice to each other. I'm starting to think that it's always been like that now. Uh, and I was getting really frustrated because I was seeing it bleed into work and the way our clients treated us and people in our team. And I stumbled across this article about these two guys, James Fowler and Nicholas Christakis from Harvard University, who had scientifically proven that kindness is contagious. That if I do something nice for you, you will statistically do something nice for four more people. And each of those people will do something nice for four more people and so on and so on. Now, being in the business of branding and marketing, we love anything viral like that. So I was immediately intrigued. But even more so, I thought, hey, maybe this could solve my problem with people being nice to each other. And so I used the resources I had at my disposal, which were considerable, to produce a feature length documentary called Kindness is Contagious, a film all about being nice, but more importantly, the benefits of being nice. It turns out that whole thing about nice guys finishing last is totally bogus, that nice people actually, on average, make more money. They have better jobs, which makes perfect sense because who hires jerks? They have more friends, which is very useful in today's business environment. Um, they have better family relationships, of course. And then the thing that just totally blew me away is nice people physically live longer than mean people. 
and this is all scientifically proven by folks like from Harvard, Yale, Stanford, all these well-known, um, you know, smart people institutions. And being an entrepreneur, I immediately thought, well, I wonder if there's any businesses that put kindness into practice as like a business tool. And so we started interviewing Silicon Valley startups, green energy companies, nonprofits, healthcare organizations, people whose day job was making the world a better place. And I started to get a little bit jealous. And this is where it comes around to why um, we do what we do and why we started this company is I started to be a little jealous because my day job was basically sucking every last penny out of people's pockets. And these guys, their day job was making the world a better place. And I thought, what could I do to make my day job making the world a better place? And what I came up with was, what if I teach those guys how to suck every last penny out of people's pockets, but put it to use for good, for the benefit of mankind? And with that, the Bureau of Small Projects was formed as a startup within my old, originally as a startup within, within my old company. And then after about a year, my business partner came up to me and said, David, uh, maybe you ought to start paying attention to our, and he used the air quotes, real clients. And I was like, well, maybe you haven't looked at our balance sheet, but it seems like we're financing your, and I use the air quotes myself, we're financing your real clients. And we got into one of those founders fights. And at that moment, I spun the, we decided he was going to keep the old company. I kept the new one and spun the Bureau of Small Projects into its own company. We've doubled in size every year since, and we just made the Inc. 5000 list for fastest growing companies in America. That's a great story, David. Uh, thank you. Being an entrepreneur, this episode's topic is converting visitors to customers. How do you help businesses accomplish that task? Oh, my God. Well, one of the things we do is our, our tagline or kind of our mission is Fortune 500 and big brand experience put the work for small business startups and nonprofits. And we're fundamentally a branding agency. And what I noticed was when small organizations would come to us with branding, they would be asking for a logo, fonts, color choices, things like that. And it struck me that the big difference between small organizations and big organizations and the way they think about branding is small organizations, it's visual, it's a logo, large organizations, it's strategy. And converting customers or visitors into customers is all about strategy. And it's all about what identifying what it is that makes you different and better than your competitors and then articulating that, we call that creating the package. So first you have to learn who your competitors are, what they do well, what they do poorly. You need to understand what they do well because you have to be at least as good as they are. And you have to understand what they do poorly because that's where opportunity lies. And that different and better kind of lies somewhere in the poorly part of that. And then once you can articulate what it is you do differently and better than your competitors, then um, converting visitors into customers is, I'd, I'd like to say, the easiest thing in the world, but as we know, business is not easy. But all it is is getting that message in front of people, and that's how you convert them into customers. Convince them what you do is different and better than your competitors, and that's the reason they should do business with you rather than somebody else. Well, that kind of leads into the next question about helping businesses realize it's not who they think their competitors are but who their customers think their competitors are. It's kind of funny because the, the, I, this whole notion of, of understanding your competitors hit me really like a, like a ton of bricks um, in this one meeting. Um, I was in this meeting in the Transamerica building with one of our clients, ClearSpeed, and they're a very well-funded startup, and they had a couple of big agencies that were helping them with the branding process. Our role was to come up with a name for this company. They were AC Global Risk before we came up with ClearSpeed. And we're sitting in a room with all these really smart, well-known people, and they had asked us to share our onboarding document. And our onboarding doc, everybody shared all of their onboarding documents, not just us. And when we did that, 
it hit me like it just like hit me that everything we've been doing all this time has been all wrong because our onboarding document was all wrong and it was exactly like everybody else's onboarding document. It was like one of those moments that make you think we got to change everything we do now. It's humbling, but also it also invigorating at the same time. And what our questions were to clients, and you've probably heard this a million times, is what brands do you admire? We'd ask our clients, what websites do you look at? What colors do you like? What uh, fonts do you like? Things like that. One of, the, one of the companies even had a silly question, like if you were an animal, what type of animal would you be? And I realized at that moment that we all had been asking the wrong question. And in case it isn't obvious, because it was not obvious to me until that very moment in a high pressure business meeting, um, the question we should have been asking is not what colors do you like, what brands do you admire, what websites do you look like, or do you look at? We should be asking what brands do your customers admire? What websites do your customers look at? What colors do your customers like? And from that moment on, we changed all of our onboarding documents. We changed our whole approach to everything. And now when we do research, we call it a landscape analysis. Um, when we research the competitors of our clients, we interview their customers because our clients don't always know who their competitors are, as your question kind of alluded to, but their customers always do. And so we always start with interviewing our clients' customers before we start a big branding project. We're speaking with David Gaz, founder, CEO for the Bureau of Small Projects. David, what's the worst advice you were ever given? <laughs> okay, I've got two different types of advice here. Um, my father is the person that's given me simultaneously my best advice and worst advice. The unrelated worst advice was, I think second marriages are always the best. And the worst advice leading to business was I when um, I graduated from college, my first job was in Paris, France. And he told me not to go to Paris. They don't like Americans there. And it was the number one most transformational thing in my life. I learned a second language. I, it opened the world up to me uh, from a business standpoint. It turned me from an American business person to an international business person. Couldn't have done anything better. We're speaking with David Gass, founder, CEO for the Bureau of Small Projects. David, is there anything I've not asked that you'd like to add? Oh my God, I could talk your ear off. But one, one thing that's interesting since we're talking to entrepreneurs, our clientele, as I mentioned, are small businesses, startups, and nonprofits. And we work with a great number of small businesses now. A lot of people ask me, what do successful small businesses all have in common? Through our clientele, through what I do, I love working with entrepreneurs, we see things that work and what works and what doesn't work. And near as I can tell, what all small businesses, successful small businesses have in common is they don't give up. I tell people when they're, when they're doing their marketing, they're running ads, branding, whatever they're doing, is don't gamble. Don't ever get yourself in a position where I'm going to mortgage my house and I've got one month to see if this is a viable business. Just make sure you always have resources on hand and be ready to change pivot in Silicon Valley. They call it pivoting, but get ready to change your strategy direction um, as you're figuring out what it is that makes you different and better than your competitors. And then just don't give up. The only way you can go out of business is by quitting. Other than that, no way you can get out of go out of business. David, how can people get in contact with you? Uh, email me at gaz at smallprojectsbureau.com. Email me directly if you're listening to this podcast. I will get back to you. And then small bureau, bureau small projects, you can do bureau small projects in any order. We come up first on Google. And then if you can't remember, gaz at smallprojectbureau.com, just click on any of the links on the website. 
David, thank you for joining us today on the BCF ORG podcast, The Business of Business. Brian, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. My sincere thanks to David Gass for joining us today. Managing the performance of your company is one of the most important things you do as a leader. This podcast is on YouTube and over 20 podcast directories. Subscribe or follow wherever you get your podcast. In search, type BCF ORG. Be sure to leave a space between BCF and ORG. Feel free to share this podcast with people who you think may benefit. A strong rating of these podcasts would be appreciated. If you'd like to reach out to me for business consulting or with any questions, comments, ideas, or potentially be a guest like David, please go to bcforg.com. There's a red contact us button in the middle of the homepage. A LinkedIn symbol is on the upper right. Click on that if you'd like to see my profile. All the podcasts are available by clicking on the website podcast page in the reference bar. These podcasts will be released the first and third Tuesday each month. In the next episode, 93, our guest will be Jim Stevenson, discussing strategy, transformation, and growth. In business, running a successful, profitable business is the ultimate scorecard. You are never done and can always be better. It tends to be more fun than work, frustrating at times, but can be very rewarding. From BCF ORG Corp., I'm Brian Fisher, wishing you the best. Thanks. Thanks.